what's up everybody welcome to the first edition of backseat bus talk from rocktail entertainment welcome to the new studio which is the back of the rocktail bus uh, i'm here today with stefan livingston of livingston honey how you doing today stefan doing pretty good all right well uh the purpose of backseat bus talk is to bring you Kind of neat adventures throughout the state of South Dakota, mostly the Britain, Langford, Lake City, Eden region, but we'll also venture into uh, other areas of the state. And Stefan, where do you come from? I am from Brookings, South Dakota, uh, born and raised there, and my wife and I uh, try to do a little beekeeping, and it's just kind of a fun hobby. All right, uh, how did you get into beekeeping? Uh, my great grandpa we found out here pretty recently was a beekeeper out in new york and then uh, he passed down uh, his skills and some of his uh, tools uh, down to my grandpa which passed them down to my dad and my dad got rid of uh, the hobby about 20 years ago when he is extremely allergic to bees and he got stung a couple times so uh, i kind of picked up where he left off and here we are all right so uh I know you a little bit from my sister-in-law. Well, more than a little bit. We hang out quite a bit. But uh, from what I've seen over the past few years, uh, beekeeping is really a passion of yours, and it really kind of ties it together as a family. Here's my little dude here with you beekeeping. Can you kind of <clears throat> tell us what this picture's about? Yeah, so at the beginning of the spring, uh, before we get all of our bees into the hives, uh, these are going to be... Uh, they're called nooks, N-U-C-S, and what they are is they're just five frames of bees that they use to transport across uh, the country or from location to location if they need to. Uh, so this is Kylan helping me uh, unload. This is uh, five hives worth. Um, you can see him right there. So he's helping me lift those in and out of out of a truck and uh, kind of getting me started for the rest of the summer. So do you always have five hives, or do you have more or less some years? Uh, right now I'm having five, and uh, or I've had five this year. I'm uh, expanding a little bit to six, so we're going to have six hives this year. Um, kind of depends on hit and miss how the bees do throughout the summer. Uh, right now I'm hoping all six do really well and probably get about 20, 20 gallons out of it is what I'm hoping for this summer. That's a pretty good amount. Uh, so is this some of the honey that we're seeing here? Correct. So that's some of the honey after it's uncapped. Um, what we do is we take a hot electric knife and we'll slice open the caps. Um, it's like it's just wax and underneath that is what is where the honey is. So I'll stick the, uh, that frame uh, along with all the honey that, that, uh, that the bees have made and it'll spin in a big drum and all the honey will come out and uh, down off the bottom. Okay, so some of this honey here, basically, um, that we're seeing is kind of, you're, you're taking the frame out and putting it back in on this picture, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And then we, so we just take the frame out of the hive, and then this is towards uh, the end of this, uh, the fall when we're extracting. And we'll take that frame, uh, cut it open with uh, our knife, and then we yeah, it's a big old drum. And right now I've just got a little hand crank one, and we just spin it around until centrifugal force will make all the honey go out, and then it'll drip down, and then I gather in a big bucket. And then I just uh, I put it in the jar from there. Okay. Uh, so a lot of news recently about uh, killer hornets. Are you worried all, <laughs> at all about that? Uh, at the moment, I am not. Uh, I, I followed up a little bit with them. Uh, last I read, they're kind of out, out west, northwest area, which is still a very big honeybee uh, pollinating uh, area, region of the country. Um, but right now, uh, I'm hoping this summer I won't be too worried. We'll kind of keep an eye on them and see what the, the smart people, the scientists, uh, <laughs> figure out for us, and then, uh, then we'll kind of worry about it. It ever reaches at the coast. Right. I'm, I'm glad we are where we are and it hasn't affected us too much yet. Uh, once again, we're here with Stefan Livingston of Livingston Honey from Brookings, South Dakota. Um, I've had my own here. It's very tasty. Uh, is there anything else you can do with this honey besides just eat it? Uh, that's a good question. So recently I have uh, I've used whipped honey. Uh, very easy to do. You just uh, take a little hand beater, 
uh, beat it for a few minutes, uh, mix it with some butter. If you want to whip your butter and then uh, add a little bit of cinnamon, some powdered sugar, and you got incredible whipped honey butter uh, for any kind of bread, <laughs> biscuits, stuff like that. I've also experimented a little bit with honey infusions. Um, I made a really good rosemary garlic infused honey, which tastes amazing on pork chops and chicken. And hoping to experiment a little bit more uh, this fall, maybe some spicy honey, uh, which would be really good for, uh, again, chicken or okay. uh, something like I've that. I've even heard um, maybe home remedies for scrapes and things like that. Yeah, too. if you have uh, scrapes, scars, um, warts, something like that, you just dab a little bit of honey on them, uh, throw a Band-Aid over it, and within a few days it should go away. Uh, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so I don't know if I could really recommend that too much for everyone, but right. <laughs> right. seems to work about 99% of the time. Very nice. <laughs> um, so I see you brought some toys with you today, or yeah. maybe not toys, but tools anyway. Uh, so we'll take a look at those and see what you got here. Alrighty. So this is that uh, electric knife that I was talking about. Uh, this is used to simply plug it in, and this will turn to a really hot temperature. And what we do is we just slice off the wax on these frames and that exposes the honey for us and that's how we extract it and that's what goes into the jars. Uh, this is our hive tool, uh, pretty generic but it's actually extremely important and uh, very useful for us. Um, just a couple kind of a slimmer edge here and there and you just kind of wedge and, and use it. It's uh, very handy and we'll hopefully have some videos maybe this summer that we can show you exactly how much this comes in handy. Uh, this is the other uh, very important tool. This is a smoker. Um, you simply put, it's a simple, essentially just a little fire chamber. You throw uh, some twigs, some smoker fuel in there, uh, light it up, and then give it a few squeezes, and then this will uh, be bellowing with smoke. And what this does is this will calm the bees. I'll let them know that I'm here, and I'm just here to help them, take care of them. That'll prevent the bees from coming out real angry and and stinging me. So, so when they when they see you come and they get excited, and then yep. you use this basically to calm them down. Correct. Yep. Okay. And all those worker bees flying around that you see, uh, they'll go report back to the queen and say, "Hey, uh, everything's all right." Or if uh, if I'm not out there with the smoker and someone else is, maybe it's an intruder, uh, they'll go warn the queen, and the queen will give them orders to go go sting them and give their life to protect the queen. It's kind of incredible. And this is probably one of my. Uh, my most important thing since I am also very allergic to bees <laughs> we, which is kind of weird but this is a bee veil and this was actually my uh, my grandpa's uh, when he did it when he was younger so right now I don't use this particular one this one kind of sits on my shelf and uh, but this essentially you have a little zipper here which will zip to your bee suit uh, and this just prevents all the bees from coming in um, a mesh that you can still see and breathe out of and uh, very, very, very important for those who are either allergic or scared of bees um, or just want to be protective. <laughs> nice. So I feel like we've learned a lot here today. Um, where can anyone who's watching reach you at? Uh, so I've got a Facebook page that we launched recently. Uh, it's just Livingston Honey. Uh, you can check us out there. I've got an Instagram. Uh, for those who do know us, uh, reach out to Austin or myself. You can shoot us a call or text and we'll be able to hook you up with something. Or if you ever want to come visit, uh, we're in the Brookings area. I'd love to take anyone out there just to, just to show them what it's all about. Perfect. Very neat. Well, uh, thank you for joining us here today. We appreciate you being on. Um, once again, you just watched Backseat Bus Talk with Rocktail Entertainment. Uh, we'll be coming to you again in the future here with some more neat adventures around South Dakota. Um, once again, thanks, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you next time.